You are now in the mix. All right, let's go. With DJ Shoeshine. Shoeshine. On Shoeshine Radio. Hey, yo, you're on Shoeshine Radio. Who I had a pleasure of speaking with? This is Sharon Leaper Marson. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, love. How you doing today? I'm good. That's good. That's good. Ladies and gentlemen, this interview right here, we're doing something a little bit different. So, you know, Shoeshine Radio, we're bringing you nothing but the best in music and celebrity interviews. But today we have celebrity wardrobe stylist and CEO and founder of Perfect Pineapple Raps, the beautiful (laughs) Sharon Martin. How are you, baby? I am good. That sounds so official. I appreciate the intro. <laughs> Everything we do around here is official and exclusive. So I'm glad to have you on the show. And, um, you know, definitely this will not be your last time on the Shoe Shine Radio platform. So I thank you for uh, taking time out of your schedule to chop it up with me as well as my listeners. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. Yes, thank you. So, you know, the, the first question that I ask each celebrity guest, you know, pertaining to music is, you know, basically, when did music begin for you? But since you are a wardrobe stylist, just share with me, when did your passion begin for for clothes and styling? Mm, good question. Um, my passion for styling and fashion started at a really young age. Um, when I was little, I actually uh, always aspired to be a fashion designer and um I just always used to draw couture gowns. So I thought that I would just be strictly like a dress designer, a couture gown designer. And I was just in love with um, Vera Wang at the time. And just, and I still love her work, but just, just love designing dresses and like Roberto Cavalli and things like that. And it just kind of evolved from there. Um, Always creative, but yeah, I've loved fashion since I was a little girl. Okay, cool, cool. Now we definitely, you know, I see a lot of the the fashion trends, especially like with some of the R and B artists today, like Ella Mae and Danielle. Uh, you can just see that that '90s style kind of coming back into friction into the present. So, how, how does that make you feel as a stylist to see the styles from back in the day to resurface today? I love it. I love it. And as a fashion person um i just love to see how they reinvent themselves every time they come back around because yes honestly like the 80s and 90s are some of my favorite areas of fashion also like some of the late 70s so i just i just love to see what elements are they pulling from the previous era into this new wave you know what are they leaving out why are they leaving that out it's super interesting honestly when you really take a look at it yeah, I, th- I think it's pretty dope. And just to see um, a Carl Kanai is definitely uh, resurfacing. And it's just, it's just pretty dope to see all those styles coming back and just, you know, restocking up my, my wardrobe myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, just like for spring, how the neon colors and like just more edgier looks. Um, how tie-dye is coming back for spring. Tie-dye is a 70s trend. Mm-hmm. So just loving and seeing how they're mixing and mashing these these eras of gorgeous cool fashion that were like statement eras is just something i live for right right definitely i can see that so you know with it being cold right now winter time is definitely still in um what's the the trending color you know because you know my favorite color is red and white and you know so what what's the trending color that a lot of people that you style are wearing um, honestly, for winter, a lot of the color palettes, and it's it's usually pretty consistent seasonally, but like mauves, um, you know, burgundies, um, earth tones, those are really like some of the, the trendy colors for, for winter. Um, honestly, the thing that I loved to see this, this winter was like the resurgence of like winter white. It was just you know the whole don't wear white after labor day yeah, yeah. kind of out of the window and i love love to see whites emerge in the winter season so from my perspective those are the colors that i see a lot for uh, this winter season okay sweet sweet so i mean I, I i get it you know a lot of people say oh don't wear white after labor day and stuff like that but i mean hey it is what it is with me so right <laughs> And that's a part of your personal style. It's honestly, that's the thing that I love about fashion. It's just like there there are trends and then there's your personal style. And honestly, the trendsetters, and I said this in another interview, uh, the trendsetters are the people that don't really allow the trends to hinder their self-expression. 
they end up creating a new trend. So, yeah, at the end of the day, you do what makes you feel good. But, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Look, mom, I told you I'm a trendsetter. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's what's up. So, um, I see you got, um, you know, entrepreneur as well. So, talk to me about this um this head wrap line uh, perfect pineapples talk to me about that yes so perfect pineapple um perfect pineapple oh my gosh what can i say it's teaching me a lot so uh, it is my head wrap company and it started by happenstance it started from me um having a scarf that my grandmother gave me that had a knot in it and I couldn't untie it. So it was a square piece of fabric, I couldn't untie the center of it. Mm-hmm. And I would wrap my hair for years with this scarf, just kind of working around the fact that I couldn't untie it. For whatever reason, I just loved the scarf. And, you know, as natural hair just really, really started to emerge, my family, honestly, I came from a family of women who were always natural, who were about their braids. My mom, you know, wore short hair before. It was cool to wear short hair before the Amber Roses of the day. Like, she had her hair cut. My grandmother did too, braids, everything like that. And so it was always, I grew up in a family where it was always important to embrace like your African heritage and things like that so wrapping my hair was just normal Um, but it wasn't necessarily a part of my everyday style but it was definitely a part of my night care routine and so as like the trend with like pineappling your curls to keep your curls you know your wash and go and things like that started to emerge of course I was doing it myself but I realized when I had this scarf and I did the style that it actually looked cute and I was like wow if this if the scarf wasn't so beat up that would actually be cute. I actually like wear my hair out of the house like this. Right. And the light bulb just went off for me. Like, I don't know. I guess that's where, you know, God just came in and intervened and like dropped nuggets of like, oh, this is what you should do. So mm-hmm. I went to the fabric store, recreated the pattern, like, and started just making them and seeing how many different ways I could wrap my hair with this scarf and found that some of the styles that you see, um, on Instagram where they're taking just like a big yard of fabric and they're tying it, tying it, tying it and creating these very beautiful elaborate styles I could actually achieve with my little scarf. Mm-hmm. And I, I was just like, okay, this is something. This is something. So I was wearing, it out, wearing them out and people would be like, you know, where'd you get your scarf? It's so beautiful. I was like, oh, I made it. Oh, can I get one? And I'm like, sure. And, and as it from just, there. <laughs> it kept going. I was like, oh, this is a Oh, this is a business business. Okay, let me try it. And I'm telling you, I never, you know, I'm not going to say never would have thought because I knew it was a good idea, but it really took off. It really took off and it's really evolving and it's really teaching me a lot because it's it's legit. So, yeah. Definitely, definitely. (laughs) Well, I definitely, I got to put my daughter and my wife on the spot. Yo, I am going to get you guys some of these wraps like I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely i gotta i gotta check this out so definitely once we get off of air we're gonna chop it up and yes. I'm, gonna, um, I'm gonna put them on game with this i mean because my wife is natural my daughter's been natural for six years now six or seven oh, cool. years now and um she'll be 11 so just um i mean it's pretty exciting you know what i'm saying so to see how they just i mean the hair just itself is just beautiful so definitely gotta you know accessorize it a little bit with the with the wraps so definitely perfect pineapple wraps we're gonna um talk about that more here in just a little bit but um as an entrepreneur you know we have our highs we have our lows we have you know success and failures so what have what has been some of your best success stories being an entrepreneur yeah, some of my best success stories, or one of, I would just say one, because I'm, I'm kind of new. I'm really new to being full-time, to uh, being an entrepreneur. So um, the best success story would be uh, the Detroit Natural Hair Expo that I did um, this past August, August 2018. It was me kind of really stepping out, going outside of, you know, I'm from Cleveland, um, hometown Cleveland, and going to a huge expo where someone I really, really, really look up to, um, Courtney Adelaide, the main choice, was sponsoring it. And so I had a platform to actually do a demonstration, not in 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 addition to having a booth. And so just seeing like all of the different 
entrepreneurs, all of the people that are really trying to push their product in the natural you know, hair care industry. And I consider this a fashion accessory, but I'm realizing how it just blurs the lines of hair care and fashion. So just understanding the niche and seeing all that, it was just so enriching and just so uplifting to see so many people going after it. And then um, the sales were great. The response was great. The connections I made, you know, were great um, and really helped push my business forward. And then I got to meet Courtney herself. I got to understand a little bit of who she was. Um, she hosted a, a small brunch where you could buy a ticket and she allowed us to be intimate with her and hear her story, her journey. She's so transparent. I mean, it was just one of those moments that are kind of you know, you come to a crossroad or you come to uh, those special pivotal moments in your career or in, in your journey where you're like, that changed me. And yeah. that that planted something in me that I know I'm going to I'm going to pull and pull and draw from when the hard times happen. Right, right. Like you like you talked of. So, yeah, that was probably one of my highs of, of my entrepreneurship journey. And, and the lows, <laughs> the lows. Uh, they come. They, yeah, they, they do. Come. They, they come. <laughs> no, no short, no short. Uh, you know, stock of lows. Um, I think the lows is just honestly navigating it, navigating it when uh, being resourceful and understanding your market and the research and being a highly creative person, kind of shutting that off and being very uh, disciplined and you know, getting the numbers, getting the the margins, understanding the business, really becoming a business owner, crossing over from it being a hobby to being like, this is something that needs to feed my family. Right. That is that, that, that tension, that, that hard time sometimes. Yeah. And, and you yeah. know, as, as an entrepreneur myself, you know, we, you know, we've experienced a lot of success and, you know, failures, but I always tell my team, my people, you know what I'm saying? Don't look at it as a failure. Look at it as a lesson learned because the only way you fail is if you quit. You know what I'm saying? If you just let it go and just, you know, F it. I don't want to do it anymore. You know, that's when you fail, you know. So definitely, um, you know, definitely take that into consideration and just, you know, keep doing the work and God is going to bless everything from there, you know. Yeah, I received that. Thank you. Most For definitely. sure. Most definitely. So how can my Instagram followers, my Twitter followers get engaged with you on social media? What's the name on IG? Yes. So you can follow me um, on my wardrobe stylist profile. It is freely underscore C. So that's F-R-E-E-L-Y underscore C. And then for Perfect Pineapple Wraps, you can just follow me on um, Instagram or Twitter at, at Perfect Pineapple Wraps. And then you can also go online if you want to shop for your wraps at www.perfectpineapplewraps.com. Cool, cool. That's what's up. So I know you mentioned that you're from Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. Big shout out to Cleveland. You know what I'm talking about. Had uh, the opportunity to interview the legendary hip hop artist MC Brain. So I just got to ask you this one question: Are you a football head? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I have been forced to be one. My husband is like a diehard like Cleveland sports fan, and I didn't know how serious it was. I love. I've always loved basketball, but football. Yeah. Like, I, I never really watched it. And I should, because honestly, I'm a part of a football family. My uncle, uh, Willie Brown of the Raiders, that's my uncle, who's the Hall of Famer. Oh, and man. so, okay. um, I, I'm a football family, but yeah. I, have, I was not like a football watcher. But now, I totally get it. I can watch a game, <laughs> and I understand what's happening. So, um, But, you know, what Baker Mayfield is doing for us, you know, is pretty, pretty cool. So, yeah. I'm pretty into it right now. Yeah, I think... Um I think this is, I mean, football-wise for me, just seeing the Cleveland Browns, seeing what they accomplished this year was kind of like a like a Super Bowl earning to me. So big shout out to, you know, the yeah. city of Cleveland, the Cleveland Browns, everybody out there that's tuning in. And, um, you know, much success to the Browns in the upcoming new season, man. It's going to be definitely lit, so. For sure. I'm super excited. I think the whole city is really excited about that. Most definitely, most definitely. So are there any shout outs that you want to throw out right now? Right, right now is your time, sweetie. <laughs> um, I just want to give a shout out to um, my family, my friends, everyone who has supported Perfect Pineapple Wraps, um, all of the models, the um, influencers, um, give a shout out to my husband and um, you know, just, just a great thank you to everybody who's supporting what I'm doing, who's been a friend, encouragement throughout my journey, so. 
Most yeah. definitely, most definitely. So, you know, right now, man, it's, um, you know, the, the 2019 is looking like an amazing year for everyone that's in business. So I just, uh, you know, I pray in advance and ask God to bless your business, your team, your covenant with your husband. And, um, you know, sky's the limit from here. So Shoe Shine Radio is a, is a platform that supports anybody and everybody. So anytime you want to, you know, do another interview or anything like that, you know, with just a phone call away, a DM away, and we have no problem with getting that set up for you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, shout out to you and also super grateful to God. Like, I don't want to um, negate that, but that's yeah. like what's understood ain't got to be explained. Right. If it wasn't for God, like I wouldn't be doing any of this. So yeah. definitely. And I'm thankful that you allow people to express uh, that way and that, you know, your faith is it's just an encouragement to other people's faith. So thanks for, for, for being authentic to yourself. Oh, yeah, we got to keep it 100 nine days. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no telling. Mm-hmm. What's going to happen in this nation? So we got to stick together, come together, secure this bag, and get our, <laughs> right. get our own. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Absolutely. So ladies and gentlemen, man, it's, it's been fun. Uh, I've enjoyed this interview with you. The beautiful Sharon Martin is on Shoe Shine Radio. And uh, y'all need to check out the Perfect Pineapple Wraps. And make sure you follow on Instagram and connect with her. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, y'all keep it locked right here. We got some music coming up momentarily and a hot, hot mix from yours truly right here on Shoe Shine Radio. Keep it locked. Mm-hmm. So she told me, rolling over, she had something to show me.
your boy Tank, and you are not tuned in with my man at DJ Shoeshine on Shoeshine Radio. Without you, baby, I feel worthless. I'm living on the edge. It's been an hour since you've been gone, and that's too long, so come back home. Can't live without you. So I cry for you Do anything that I can To feel that touch from your hand Sorry that I want you Lady, what do I do? You know you're everything I do Shusha. Shusha. 